Ahava blessings. Welcome to this episode of Hold the Shekinah. This podcast is here to support us during these times of heightened energy, awakening, and ascension to embody, integrate, activate, and remember our soul essence. I am your host. My name is Aria. I am an ordained Magdalene priestess, a Reiki master, energy, and sound healer. And in this episode, we are going to talk all about this new moon in the sign of Leo. And not just the new moon in the sign of Leo, because every new moon kicks off a new lunar cycle. And the lunar cycles follow the moon, obviously. And just so we are clear, this isn't a worship of the moon. This is simply understanding these energies allows us to align our lives more precisely or more attune ourselves more to the frequencies of the cosmos and in doing that we notice that our lives because we are the cosmos they align more everything just seems to flow and move and we're able to better handle whatever is energetically happening and being activated within us because as above so below as within so without we are all interconnected so this lunar cycle is packing quite a punch and in the spirituality of Yeshua and Mary Magdalene and the Christ lineage um, these they were Gnostics they were mystics so they they followed a different rhythm. They were more attuned to the mysteries and the Chokhmah traditions, the teachings of the deep feminine wisdom. So they aligned with the moon. They celebrated the cycles of the earth and all of this because they understood that this was part of creation. And as we are all, and they were a part of creation, they knew that to be attuned to all of these cycles, to learn how to delve deeply into the teachings of these cycles, allowed them to access and open up to more of their soul, to bring down more of the light of creation. So this month, in Aramaic spirituality and this Gnostic mysticism, Kabbalistic astrology, this would be their culminating month because their lunar year began with Virgo, with the queen, with the priestess. And it ended with Leo, the king, the sovereign, being united with the queen priestess, Virgo. So this month is one of the hardest months. It is like Cancer and like Capricorn. There's a lot of energy coming in and a lot of, historically, a lot of stuff has happened during this lunar cycle. A lot of, um, I think both Jewish temples were destroyed during the, the month of Ab. So there's a lot that always happens in this lunar cycle. And that isn't to scare you, that's simply a background. So this month is all about Leo, the lion, the sovereign, the king, the queen, the sovereign. And Leo is that energy of the heart. Leo rules the heart chakra. It is in the shadow, in this world of duality. Leo can express itself in the more shadow aspects, which are, you know, oh, look at me, it's all about me, that um, wanting to get that attention, that egoic energy. However, that's not the true essence or the true nature of Leo. Leo is incredibly magnanimous. Leo is regal and sovereign and knows their power and knows how to employ their power. Leo is very giving and also loves to receive. Leo is here to shine. And this new moon is happening at 12 degrees and 34 minutes. So <laughs> there's just a fact. 
fact that that's an angel number one, two, three, four, that that says to me that this new moon, this new lunar cycle is grounding in energy. We are being asked to be open to receive this, these higher frequencies and to ground them. Just like the numbers are sequential, it's basically knowing, okay, I need to do this, and then I have to move forward to this, and then this will allow me to create the foundation. So it's all about creating the structure and the foundation for the maximum illumination and sharing and receiving of your light. So there are two Aramaic letters that rule this lunar cycle. Leo was created by Thet, the Aramaic letter Thet, and the sun was created by Kaf. So it is as, as problematic as this month of Av has been or can be. It really is about transcendence. It is about deep transformation. It is about really, truly choosing our alignment and being in the power of our sovereignty, knowing that power, even though in the dualistic world, if we just look at it on the 3D realm, it is, you know, everyone knows that, you know, if, you know, someone has power, they tend to abuse it. And so in our society, we have um, something of a, complicated relationship with power because everywhere around us and more and more we are seeing this people abuse their power people use their power or I should say misuse their power to subjugate to manipulate to control to enslave to all sorts of things however we we have to understand that this is part one this is part of the the human experience that our soul chose to incarnate into so we can come back into remembrance and into our oneness and two we must understand that in in the higher realms there is none of that duality so there is no okay this is the shadow this is the light this is it's all unity it's all oneness and this is what this this earth experience this experience of human life is meant to show us how we can come so sep become so separate from our true essence and still come back into acceptance still come back into our true essence and not misuse our power to know that our power is not something that is here to be used for good or for bad it is something that is used is here for us to embody so we can create, so we can expand in our light. And by expanding in our light, what we are doing is we're aligning to the divine, we are bringing down those higher frequencies and we're anchoring them in this earth. It's never been about, okay, well, we're just gonna ascend and the hell with this world. No, it's always been about transforming the here and now. So if your current experience is something that is not 100% to your liking, it's because there is something there. There is a gift that is waiting to be revealed through the transcendence of, this, of these or this circumstance. So, and it all is about trusting that we are, as long as we are aligning and choosing wisely the frequency we are wishing to bring down, that we will be able to transcend and transform and truly embody our power. So the Thet that created Leo is a symbol of goodness. It is a life of purpose. It, it basically teaches us that everything, everything in this world has a purpose. Everything in this world that is manifest has its own energetic field. It is all about intention. And it is about knowing that we are the infinite light of creation. And in that knowing, in that acceptance of this world, unifying 
all that we see as opposing, as dualistic, as polarity, so we can generate more light, so we can manifest more of the heavenly celestial, um, what is that word, Amrita, those heavenly dewdrops of mana, like manifest more of those frequencies here on earth. Kaf created the sun, and Kaf is all about giving and receiving. There is no giving without receiving. There is no receiving without giving, and yet we are taught that we must give, 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 or receive, 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 and not the other. That somehow it's wrong to do both, or to receive. It's even if we notice that we don't know how to take a compliment, something as simple as that, this blocks the flow of energy from being received by our energy field, by our experience. And when we do this, what we are saying is that somehow we know better. We know that we are not deserving, we are not worthy, so we don't want these blessings. And in doing that, what we are doing is we are negating the infinite wisdom of the divine. So. It really is about having the humility to be in acceptance, to be in humility, to be in receptivity, to receive the messages, embody them, and take action. So it is understanding that everything is happening for us, not to us. Even the most challenging of circumstances is an opportunity that our soul chose to experience in order to expand, in order to evolve, in order to grow, or just for fucking shits and giggles, because our soul, the higher self, clearly has a sense of humor, <laughs> even if we in our human self don't, because we're like, oh my god, why on earth would I, why would I choose this? But we choose it for a reason, there is a higher purpose. There is always a reason. And this brings us to our sovereignty. When you know that you are infinite wisdom, infinite creation, creating infinitely, you know that you are interconnected to everyone and everything and every being, every experience is simply a mirror of something within you that needs to be healed, loved, accepted, um, cherished, brought peace into peace with, all of it is here because it's meant to add to your experience. It's meant, meant to support you in sharing more of your light. Then the way that we perceive the world changes. It shifts. And we, especially during this month, well, during every month, but particularly during Leo month, we need to get out of the ego we need to understand that the ego and the mind exist for a finite purpose. They exist to keep you safe. They exist to basically teach you that you don't put your hand in fire because you're going to get burned. But beyond that, the mind and the ego can only keep us trapped and enslaved and indoctrinated and um, confused and delusional as to our true essence because it is, it is basically keeping us in a box. And when we are ready, we can start letting go. We can start purifying, we can start transmuting, we can start dissolving and, what's the word I'm looking for? Freeing ourselves, liberating ourselves from all of these layers, all of these karmas, traumas, limiting beliefs, all of these stories we've taken on. So let's give you an example. So the ego and the 3D structure of the world, it is basically like, how do I say this? So it's like an image. It's like having an image or a video that's in black and white, poor resolution, it's grainy as hell, and it's just, it served its purpose because when video first came out, 
when photographs first came out, they were this primitive sort of play with shadow and light that would bring us an image into either a daguerreotype or a paper or um, film. But the more that we ourselves as a humanity have evolved with our techniques and with science and with knowing how to work with light and shadow, that evolved. It evolved into um, pictures that were black and white and better quality and then it evolved into color and then it evolved into um, high definition and then it evolved into 4, 4k or 6k or whatever but you're following me that the more that we expand and the more that we purify and the more that we do the work on the inner world to dissolve and transmute and transform all of that stuff take get rid of what doesn't serve us the more that we can shine and truly share the light of the image and that image in the case of you is your soul is your infinite self and because creation is infinite you may or may not get to the point where you are expressing and sharing all of your light but you may not because at the same time you, we have to understand creation is expanding always in all directions across all timelines so there are infinite ways we can grow and we only have one lifetime in this particular form to express what we came here to share in this particular form so that is pretty exciting to me because it means that you have infinite ways of expressing your light expressing your mission and it isn't about what you do or who you are or how much money you have in the bank it's none of that nonsense that we have been taught to associate with our work with our mission it is about sharing your light knowing that you are infinite and when we know that we are infinite we are not ruled by the ego in the mind we are not in this dualistic i'm better than this because of blah 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 we are not in this story time playtime nonsense that keeps us in separation when we think about the teachings of yeshua when we read it, the teach about the teachings of yeshua and go back way back into the aramaic into, into the original language that they spoke we can see that what yeshua termed as sin was satana and that wasn't satan some horny horned red being with you know i don't know what's what are the latest images of the devil um whatever flames of inferno you get my drift um it that wasn't what satana was satana meant separation separation from our infinite oneness so when we do not see ourselves in everything everyone that we are a part of everything and everything is a part of us that is when we are creating this satana this separation from our soul from our light so it is quite interesting to see how our society has been indoctrinated into different thought schools into different religions that all they do is perpetuate separation all they do is basically say you must proselytize because the other person is a heathen or we must kill these people because they're heathens all of this is creating more separation and more duality and in the infinite wisdom that is the divine none of it is kosher so this month we need to align ourselves with how we can not only receive the blessings attune ourselves to the higher frequencies of creation but also ground them and anchor them to know that just as we have the potential to receive from the divine we have the potential to connect and to aspire to the divine so it isn't a one-way street it is constantly going back and forth 
forth. It's intertwining. It's merging. It's that sacred unity. It's creating that second sacred unity and drawing that divine energy into the earth. So while this month has that potential for profound duality, we are bringing everything back into union through our actions, through our reflection, through our words, through our being. So this this lunar cycle is quite interesting because there are quite a few squares. So squares are um, typically in astrology, they're very contentious energies. They are energies that um, they trigger us. They bring forth um, our shadow. They, um, they have the potential to bring forth our shadow, but they also have the potential to spur us into further growth further expansion if we choose to confront our weaknesses and limitations and transcend them. So it really is, we're being asked to do our work. So this month has the frequencies of the three, the numerology, in numerology, the three and the four, because once um, the degree hits past 30 minutes, we start activating the next frequency. So infinite possibilities, creativity, creation. Now mind you, Leo rules the fifth house. So the fifth house is all about creativity, all about creation. Very expansive energy, very bright energy. So it's really that knowing that in all moments we are co-creating, being conscious of our actions. And then the four, again, that energy, remember the one, two, three, four, we're cementing a frequency. It's the foundation, it's the heart chakra, it's stability, it's the structure of the world, gratitude, abundance, unconditional love, all of this is available to us. It's the union between the masculine and the feminine mind being the neutral mind. And that neutral mind, this has to do with Mercury retrograde because within like less than a day of the moon being exact on the new moon on Saturday, no, I'm sorry, no, 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 that's Sunday, the 4th, Mercury goes retrograde. Mercury's been in its shadow period and it's going to join four other planets. It's going to join Uranus, Pluto, and Saturn. So it makes it four planets that are retrograde. And retrogrades are a time of introspection. It's not a time to like be losing your proverbial shit. It's a time to really be aligning. It's a time to be going within, to be looking at all of the ways that we need to reconfigure, that we need to purge, that we need to realign, that we need to reassess, that we need to basically fine tune where we're going if we want to get to our destination. So it's interesting because this this um, retrograde in Mercury, and Mercury has to, do, has to do with our communication, it has to do with our expression, it has to do with uh, the expression of our soul, with communication, with the divine receiving the information, with um, the way that we interact with one another, community, creating community. All of this is Mercury. If you know anyone who has a lot of Mercury energy, you know they're always chatty, they're always going, they're all, they know everyone, and just like they have a ton of information, very communicative energy, very intellectual energy. And it's, um, it's very nice for me when Mercury goes retrograde because it kind of silences a lot of the overexertion of Mercury. And it makes Mercury really be deliberate about communication. And this is, this is why things go awry during Mercury retrograde, because we're still in the, if we're not paying attention, we're still in that go, 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 quick energy of Mercury, and we're not taking the time to slow down, to read the fine print, to really take a breath and allow what is being received to actually be received and be embodied before we take action. 
So it's, um, it's really interesting that it's in Virgo. So it's been in the shadow phase, which is basically when it's, it's basically the phase that it's going to go back through when we exit on the other side. And Virgo is a sign of purity, of the priestess, the queen, the, it's cleanliness, it's our daily habits, it's our health. It's a very analytical, it's ruled by Mercury. It's a very analytical, very mental, very things have to be done a certain way kind of energy to the point that sometimes Virgos can be a little too much and too fussy because everything has to be neat and clean and tidy and everything has to be in its place. Um, but we need that. <laughs> we need that Virgo energy because it's how we can ensure that we are healthy, that we are whole, that we are sane, that we are properly taking care of ourselves and maintaining ourselves. Because without paying attention to our daily habits, then we can easily be led astray, maybe eat too much junk food or, or eat foods that aren't good for us. It doesn't even have to be junk food. We can think that it's the healthiest thing and it's sold at whole paycheck. And, you know, some that must be, say, mean it's healthy, but it's not. So read the fine print, start reading the labels. And this has also to do with the energy that you are taking in. Start paying attention to the energy that you're not just putting out into the world, but the energy that you are allowing yourself to receive, the energy that you are choosing to embody. Because I guarantee that if you see something that is not quite right in your life and you're feeling something's off, that's because you're basically aligning yourself with a frequency that is not quite right for you, that it's not in alignment with the, what you truly desire to embody and to express. And this isn't a value judgment. It is simply the way that energy works. Like attracts like. So it's learning how to be pristine and impeccable with our energy, with our word. And I've been being called to purge. Like, I'm looking at my, my life, not so much my life, more like my, my home and my closets. And I'm like, why do I have all this stuff? Like, I get that I bought it for a reason, but I haven't used it. Or somebody else can get more use out of that old camera than me or that old microphone now that I've upgraded my microphone situation. So all of this... When the more that you hoard and hold on to things, thinking that maybe I will need it someday, the more that you are, you're stopping the flow of energy, especially if something is not being used. If something is not, everything in our experience is meant to be utilized. It's meant to be employed. It's meant to have a function. If that camera, let's just give that example. Apparently I'm on a camera kick. <laughs> and a picture and video kick. Um, if that is not that camera is not being used, then it's not fulfilling its purpose. And if I'm holding on to it while desiring or, or using another, another nicer or fancier camera, then what I'm doing is I'm creating a blockage of energy in my life by holding on to something that is, it's not being utilized. It's not fulfilling and expressing its purpose for existence. So for me, this retrograde and is all about, okay, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to clear out of my life with gratitude for it having been present? And all, and knowing that if there's a fear, especially when, for me, it comes to do with clothing and shoes, <laughs> if there's a fear in me as I'm going into the closet and picking something that must go because I haven't worn it and it's no longer fitting my style, then I know that I definitely have to get rid of it. <laughs> and it has to go to um, the, wherever they rescue stuff and shoes. <laughs> it has to go somewhere where it's going to be appreciated loved and used and actually fulfill its purpose for being, for bringing joy 
into someone's life. And for, so that's what I'm looking at. I'm allowing this retrograde to really serve me in showing me what it is that I still is that little girl that didn't have enough, that was always told no because we couldn't afford it. And now I'm no longer that little girl, but a part of me is still that little girl that was told no and was told we can't afford it. There's not enough money. And therefore it's like, oh, look, I have all this stuff and that makes me feel safe. But again, safety or anything, pick your adjective, whatever it is that we'll, you work, we're working on, all of it is simply the ego wanting to basically maintain control and tell you that unless you have this, you're not safe. But when you are in your spiritual sovereignty, Leo, you know that you are one with all that is, all that is is one in, with you. So there is no, there is really no place for fear. There's no place for those lower energies because you know you are taken care of. You know deep down that you are safe. You know that you are protected. You know this. And it's the same thing, like people that manipulate and subjugate and use fear and control and all of the, all of those dense lower energies that, that unfortunately we see people that think they're in power express. The reason they express all of those lower emotions is because they are living, they are living from a perspective, a fear-based perspective. They view the world from this fear lens of fear. So they feel that they need to behave that way in order to survive. So if we think about it, that really is quite sad to live your life in such a way that you constantly feel unsafe. You constantly feel threatened. And this can express if someone is threatened by ideas, threatened by certain people, certain cultures, certain places, we're triggered. And this is human nature. This is everyone. Everyone has some degree of these tendencies because we are all human beings and we all were raised and brought up with different programs and different perspectives and different lenses to through which we view the world. So as the more we liberate, the more we stand in our authenticity, in our truth, in our alignment, and the more that we feel safe, and the more that we align with our light, the more that we embody this light, and the more that we bring it forth. And so I've mentioned that there are a lot of squares, and these energies are simply there to show us what it is that we need to work on. How can we transcend and merge seemingly opposing, conflicting ideas, belief systems, merging all of this into one? And the way that we do it is through practicing non-judgment, through letting go of our own personal biases, through embodying our light, through embodying love, knowing that we are love. That is our true essence. Our true essence is love. And seeing that in everyone, everything, even those that are the most vexing and challenging, we may choose not to associate with them, but still recognizing their light, that somewhere within all of that stuff, there's light. There's a spark of the divine. Because if there wasn't, they wouldn't exist. And the question then becomes is, what are they teaching me? Are they teaching me patience? Are they teaching me acceptance? Are they teaching me how to love myself more and better? What is this situation, this interaction, this conversation that triggers the out of me? Showing me 
how can I expand, how can I evolve, how can I embody and radiate more of my light through this unification with this experience. And that is what these squares are revealing to us. And this is the other thing before we wrap up the energetic download. And I will do a separate episode just on the Mercury retrograde because I feel that we really need to talk about these retrogrades since it's there's four of them happening at the same time. So this new moon is happening at the 12th house. The 12th house is the sun, the house. <laughs> the 12th house is the house of the mysteries of the unseen, the unconscious, the subconscious, the murky depths of the psyche. It is, um, it's the house of secrets and also the house of reckoning, of reassessing, reviewing what we have done. And this gives us insight on how we must proceed on the decisions that we must make. So it's um, it's definitely a very energy, it's an energy of bringing the unseen to the surface. And this is how we heal. We heal by beginning to understand or at least acknowledge all that we have stuffed under the surface. We acknowledge it. And we let it go. Because the moment that we acknowledge something, it's no longer plaguing us in the background. It's no longer creating that that distortion in our energy field. It's being alchemized and transmuted and transformed. And this is this Leo energy. The sun is the energy that gives life. And it is this life, this light, that we are being asked to open ourselves to receive, to open ourselves to embody, and to anchor in our field, and to use it to create more light, to radiate more light. It is a very powerful month. It is a very beautiful month, and there's a lot going on. And it is really especially because the retrograde will be happening for most of this month it really is a time in in mercury let me be specific um, because and this is the closest one of the closest planets to us and to the sun so this is why mercury um, we tend to feel the retrogrades in mercury more often than other Mer- or other retrogrades planetary retrogrades so we are really being asked to slow down to truly review reassess reconfigure what needs to be seen what so ask yourself what is coming up for you what are you being triggered by what what is being brought up to the surface from the unconscious from the 12th house from the house of secrets all of that and where are you not being completely above board with yourself? Where are you basically trying to delude and confuse and basically give yourself reasons for not doing what it is that you know that you should be doing? All of this is the energies that we are working with. So how do we, how do we work with them? Well, we work with them by being open, by being receptive. This is the cup. We work with them by allowing ourselves to align and to receive, by being conscious and aware of what we are choosing with every thought, with every word, with the programs we tune into, the books we read, the music we listen to, the conversations we entertain, the conversations we don't entertain. Because even in those conversations that we don't entertain, it might be because of our own biases or our own programs or whatever, there may be something there. So what is it that we need to recognize? So this soul journey really is about asking yourself the questions, allowing yourself isn't important. 
important that doesn't matter. And Leo teaches us to have that confidence to step forward, to step into the light, to share our light, to be generous with our light, knowing and trusting that when we are generous in the giving and sharing of our light, we are also receiving. There is no separation. I guess the biggest thing, knowing that there is no separation. You are the divine, the divine is you. You are your neighbor, your neighbor is you. You are simply sparks of the divine expressing in different ways. One is not better than the other, one is not right, one is not wrong. It's simply a matter of alignment and what it is that you came here to learn, what it is that you came here to express. So happy lunar cycle in Leo, the month of Av. Pay attention to the first nine days, particularly the first nine days. Be very mindful with your thoughts, your words, your actions. Very important. Ground, go out in nature. Allow yourself to receive the light. Sun gaze in the morning or the evening. As the sun is setting or rising. Go for a walk in nature, connect with the trees, hug a tree, ground, earth, go to the beach. Allow your heart to be open. This is the month to do a lot of heart opening exercises, breath work, exercises, movement meditations, mantras. I will share a few on my YouTube, so do click the link in the show notes to follow and uh, subscribe to my channel so you can receive that and also you can follow me on Instagram. I also share shorter versions or I try to share shorter versions on my Instagram. So have a blessed new moon. Know that this is a new opportunity for you to align more strongly with your authentic expression, for you to be creative, for you to be bold, for you to be expressive and create. Be that lion. Be that be that energy of sunshine in your experience, in your interactions, in your conversations. Be the sun, be the light, share the light, express your light. Blessings on this new moon. You can listen to this, come back and listen to this again. You can also listen to the sound activation that is the next episode as many times as you want, especially during this cycle. And you can follow me on YouTube, subscribe. The link is below in the show notes at Aria Lara, A-U-R-E-A-L-A-R-A. That is also my Instagram at A-U-R-E-A-L-A-R-A. Or you can follow the show at Hold the Shahina, H-O-L-D. T-H-E-S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoy this. Um, welcome to all of our new listeners. I'm noticing more and more in Europe and in um, South America and in the East. So enjoy this episode. Enjoy the sound activation. Of course, subscribe by five-star reviews. Follow all the things. And have a blessed, blessed new moon and a blessed lunar cycle of Av. Ahava.